Now the first mistake that people very commonly make is these connectors all have different ratings and that's different current rating and voltage rating. So it defines what circuits you can use them on. Now, many of these connectors will have the rating written on the side. So you can see on the side, this way you go here, it's actually 32 amps and 450 volts. The bit on the right here is actually the US ratings and the left is the European ratings. So I'm in Europe, so it's the left-hand side, but if you're in the US, it's 20 amps and 300 volts. Not sure why but that's what, how they are. Not all connectors will have ratings written on them, but when you buy them, they should, but any decent connector should have ratings on them. I wouldn't use a type like this, a screw terminal. I would definitely be going for the, the Wago type, the lever push-in types. There's also these ideal connectors here. These all have different ratings too. These don't have the ratings written on them, but when you buy them, the box tells you what rating it is. So 450 volts, 32 amps on these orange ones. The only ones where it's lower, these 24 amp ones and up here. These are just some other connectors I had kicking around. Some of them have the ratings written on them, some of them don't. But the danger is that if you use one that has a too low a rating on a high current circuit, you could start a fire. So this here actually doesn't have a rating on it. But given the size of it, I would say that the rate, the capacity is probably very low. It's probably just meant for five or six amps. And if you were to use this on a socket circuit, you could create an issue where this could end up melting if the circuit's being maxed out on the current. Generally, I would say just stick with the Wago types. These are infinitely better than anything else, in my opinion. The other type that you see being used, these cable junctions, a bit less common these days, but you do still need to be checking the ratings on these. See, this one is 30 amps and 250 volts. So if you were to use this on a socket circuit that, that was on a 32 amp MCB, that wouldn't be appropriate. And these again, this is just screw terminal types. These used to be quite popular many years ago, but people now, typically electricians, have shifted towards using the way it goes like this. So these are not so popular, but many houses will contain these. For joining cables, these inline type connectors are, are my preference. This one here is an ideal one that's just a push-in type. Uh, you can get the cable out of it by pulling pretty hard, but generally probably wouldn't reuse one. Whereas these, you can, these Wago types, you can just leave them up and reuse them really easily. Now, the next mistake here is, again, this is a connector that is not rated for a socket circuit, and this is 2.5 mil cable, 2.5 millimeter squared, I should maybe say. And using a connector that isn't appropriate gives you a bit of a fire risk. The other mistake we've got here that you do occasionally see is exposed cores. So you can see just on these ends here, we've got a little bit of exposed copper, obviously much worse on this side. The sheathing needs to go inside here. Not too far, but it just needs to go up to where the metal connector starts. Now, another common one is not putting this connection inside an enclosure. You can't have single insulated cables outside of enclosure. So it's fine to have this gray cable outside of enclosure because this isn't single insulated, this is double insulated. So the gray is to protect against mechanical protection. So against things hitting the cable. And then these cores here are actually insulation for the electric current, they're not for protection against mechanical impacts. So this must go inside an enclosure. Type that used to be pretty popular was this chop box. So these sides here, you can see the shadow, you'd cut this out on both sides. And then this would sit inside, screw this closed, and that's perfectly acceptable connection, bar obviously this being inappropriate and the exposed cores not being appropriate as well. But if you fix those, you could put it inside this chop box and use that. Again, these were popular for a period, but now Wagos have come along, rare to see these. The much more popular type these days now is the Wago box. This is actually a Wago box light. So this is the mini one, but you just, Flop your cable in there. Obviously, it's actually not going to close because this is too big. This is not the right connector to be used in this box, but that's how it would go. You'd need your grey insulation to come further than this. So if I were going to use one of these light Wago boxes to join to cable, I'd probably use the inline types here. Now these, you can actually just push them in like so, or 
you can lever them up and then drop the lever. And on the side of a Wago, it's quite good. It tells you how much cable you need to strip. So that's 11 millimeters needs to be stripped. And then you have this window so you can actually see you've made a good connection. You can see the end of the copper just there. And you can see the copper goes in and then same with the other side. Now just three more of those. And then you would plop this in the box like that. And you just need to close that up. And then it's good to go. I think it needs a cable tie through one of these to keep the IP rating. But once you've done that, then that's good to go. Easy to open up in future for maintenance. You can also use these types of where goes to the non inline ones. They work just the same. Again, you can see the window in there. So you can see the cables have gone all the way through and you've got a good connection. See the installation's going far enough up. The other thing you see is rather than sticking this into an enclosure, just come along with a bit of tape and just tape the whole thing up and think that that's going to be fine. The tape deteriorates over time, the stickiness deteriorates and it does not constitute an enclosure, just chucking a load of tape on it. This is not okay. Now one thing that's really dangerous that you'll hopefully never see is someone twisting the cables together. So deciding that actually we haven't got a connector we're just going to twist these together and that'll do for our connection. Neutral's there, just twisted. Twist the other two. Now twisting is a terrible way to make a connection, doesn't matter how fancy your twists are. Your risk is that they're not properly touching, not properly connected. You always need to be using the correct connector. This is a big fire risk. Now if you do see this, it's probably likely it's got a bunch of tape on it as well like this. Now this is very dangerous and you're likely to cause a fire or fault doing anything like this so never twist the cables. Next one, stranded cable, I'm willing to join these. So one thing you do see is people just getting these, we'll just twist these up, they'll tug, seems tight, then we'll just chuck a bit of tape on each of those. Now again that's big fire risk and you get a very poor connection, you can see the risk of them just coming apart with any movement is very high. So definitely do not do this. Next one is use of stranded cable just straight into a screw terminal. So if you do that, you don't get a very good connection and you high risk that you're gonna squish and potentially break a lot of those fine strands. So if you can see through there, screw has come down in the terminal and just squished all the strands. Now there's quite a high risk that if you do that up too tight, you could break the strands off. Now the correct way to terminate stranded cable like this is to stick a ferrule on the end, which is one of these. So you've got these various different sizes, comes in this set, so I've just gone for these red ones, one millimeter, and that fits fine. And then you put that on the end, slide it into this crimping tool, and now you've got a solid connection that you've got a steel ferrule on there, so you could screw down on this. You're not going to damage the strands. So if you did want to put this in a screw terminal, it can go in much more easily now. Now you can see there, I've just screwed that down on that ferrule and it hasn't splayed any of the fine strands. It's just a decent connection straight down and I think they look quite nice as well. Again, I wouldn't actually use one of these screw terminals unless you have to. I would say you're much better off getting yourself a Wago like this and these ferrule connectors will just go in the Wago. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more.